In the following verses, we're going to see that Paul is starting to express and just lay it bare. We talk about the benefits of believing in Jesus and being in the spirit and not in the flesh. Again, I'm saying being in the flesh is when you are engaging human willpower or the, the power that there is just in a living human being, putting him under the law and therefore by uh, putting a focus on his ability, trying to obey commands, try and find life and eternal life by that. So um, when Paul comes and he talks about the fruit of the Spirit, he talks about the effect of being in this new teaching wherein the spirit and the life that raised Christ from the dead as it starts to live inside us, what it will bring forth. We have just seen the big, we, we now will see a big contrast, the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. And this is basically what Paul uh, discovered on his, uh, through experiential knowledge by himself as he just continued to live in his walk with God. He one day found that as I become more legalistic and as I become more law-minded, as I try to live in the flesh, which we have expressed over and over what that is, he says, then I find the fruit of the flesh in me. For in my physical body, inside my own human willpower, uh, inside the willpower of a human that is dying, is not the ability to bring forth uh, the life of God. So the effect or the fruit or the results of uh, being in the spirit is, he says here, and let us just read then from Galatians 5, verse 22 to 24. He says in verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, uh, sorry, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's, have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. So Paul comes and he is now actually talking not anymore so much language where he is referring to uh, going back under the law, but he's now referring to the third law which I have explained to you which Paul discovered. Remember, the first law that he discovered was, was the law of Moses then the law of life in Christ Jesus. And then when he went back to the law of Moses, he discovered that there is a law in his members called the law of sin and death, which is the law of weakness inside the human body to obey any laws or rules or regulations, and that will then uh, bring forth death. And he found a law inside him that when he wants to do the good, then the evil is with him. Now he's addressing that and he's basically saying that under when you are in the flesh, when you are at a place where sin takes its occasion by going back to Judaism and the law and all those kind of things, you will find the fruit of the flesh. But on the contrary, when you are in the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you will have love. And I like that he puts love first. Because the moment you put love first, you're already living a higher life than what the people that Judaized them were living because they were not loving each other or loving others as themselves. They thought that they were more special than others. They loved themselves. They loved the fact that they were Jews. And they said, you can only be loved by God. You can only be cared for by God, benefit from God, should you be like this, because that is lovely. So it already comes with a higher life than what the law can bring. And that is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. That would faith uh, in, in the, if you check it out in the Greek, it says actually faithfulness, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So what he is saying is these people want to make you guilty before uh, a law. And they want to say that in your flesh, in your life, you are disqualified. You are not righteous. He says, but let us look at what a life in the spirit brings forth. What is a life in the teaching that Jesus was raised from the dead 
and that His resurrection belongs to us, a life where in that truth is believed and where that spirit starts to live now, where you don't mix it with the law, what does that life look like? It's a beautiful life of holy fruit. And should these Judaizers come to you, you can just say to them, and you can also know for yourselves that there is no law against such a life. And then he goes on and he talks about the power of the cross. In verse 24 he says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. So what he's trying to communicate to the people in Galatia here is, listen man, <coughs> if you don't see the crucifixion, which is the place where there is the offense, which says Judaism has died and uh, Jew and Gentile both died and God made of the one a new man and reconciled that man now unto God where we can see how such a reconciled life looks like. It says, unless you, if you want to take the cross out of the thing and this, which is the place where the stumbling takes place because Paul talks about the stumbling coming in the cross. The cross is a cross of offense, which offended the Jews. Why? Because in the cross, it is no more Jew, no more Gentile. But what he is coming and he's saying is, if you go back to Jew and Gentile thing, you're basically removing the cross. And when you remove the cross, what you're taking away is this beautiful, fruitful life. For in the cross, where Jew and Gentile has ended, there also has ended the sin in the flesh. It says, for they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. He's not saying to them here that, listen, you need to start to bring forth a life that looks like a spiritual life, start to love one another, start to have joy and peace and long suffering and those kind of things. You better start to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit because since you are now Christ, you have crucified the flesh with its lusts. So you better now start to live a holy life. That's not, that's not what he's saying. He's talking in the context of should you be under the law as what it is an automatic thing that starts to take place in you when you want to be justified by works, that when you see your justification from sin and death in the resurrected Jesus and that it is a promise unto you and you are now Christ, you belong to Him, you are believing upon Him, it is the truth in your heart, what you now going to see is that love and joy and these things automatically starts to come forth in you because those who are, who are in Christ, when they've believed upon Him, the death of sin in the flesh, the true death that took place upon the cross there, is now manifesting in your life and that is a death of the old flesh and its passions. So those who are Christ's, they have in Christ ended and killed as they believed in Jesus the whole thing wherein I want to do good then I can't. Why? Because you're not under a system where you want to do good because it's some form of a qualification. You're under a system where you see the good that God wanted to do is being done unto you and you are now the recipient of the life of God. Now that is Galatians 5 verse 22 to 24.